Women entrepreneurs own 10.6 million businesses in the United States. They employ 19.1 million workers. That's one in seven employees. Their businesses account for $2.5 trillion in sales. With that in mind, here are the top 50 rules for success for women entrepreneurs. Well, I'm a very curious person and um and that curiosity really is, I, I think, at the basis for uh, all the kinds of things that I like to try and experiment with and, and attempt, and, uh, and we have um, a, a good time doing it. It's not, uh, it's not so much being driven as much as being interested in a lot of different things. The way through the challenge is to get still and ask yourself, what is the next right move? Not think about, oh, I got all of this to What is the next right move? And then from that space, make the next right move and the next right move. And not to be overwhelmed by it because you know your life is bigger than that one moment. You know you're not defined by what somebody says is a failure for you because failure is just there to point you in a different direction. Failure gave me an inner security that I had never attained by passing examinations. Failure taught me things about myself that I could have learned no other way. I discovered that I had a strong will and more discipline than I had suspected. I also found out that I had friends whose value was truly above the price of rubies. The knowledge that you have emerged wiser and stronger from setbacks means that you are, ever after, secure in your ability to survive. You will never truly know yourself or the strength of your relationships until both have been tested by adversity. Such knowledge is a true gift for all that it is painfully won and it has been worth more than any qualification I ever earned. I played a lot of sports when I was younger and I settled on soccer because the 99 team really motivated me. My dad would go out on the soccer field with me every day and it pushed myself in a good way and motivated me to be the best player I could be. Soccer was just my thing and I wanted to make it to the U.S. Women's National Team. My favorite goal was against Italy. I scored in probably the 93rd minute and I think that's one of the best parts of my game is my finishing. Everyone has their talent but it's what you do with that talent to make it great. Everything that I've done, I've worked so hard from until my toes are bleeding and no complaints. So it, it takes so much hard work. And I think the more you have to work for something, the more you cherish it. And every time I think about doing something silly or something that's gonna be detrimental to my career that I built, I think about all that time I've sacrificed in my childhood and my family and all the, the people that worked so hard and I could never disrespect all that I've worked for. I could never disrespect my fans. I could never disrespect the opportunity that I've been given. When you develop your business plan, don't be afraid to write everything down, everything that comes into your mind. Because ultimately, if you have a good business plan, well thought out, well designed, carried out for a year or two or three, you can start to follow that plan in an orderly fashion. It doesn't always work. It doesn't always work. It, all, it doesn't always turn out the way you think it's going to turn out. You might uh, stumble or trip or fall in a gully. But if you have the plan, you can get up and continue on your path. Nothing about my life is lucky. Nothing. A lot of grace, a lot of blessings, a lot of divine order, but I don't believe in luck. For me, luck is preparation meeting the moment of opportunity. There is no luck without you being prepared to handle that moment of opportunity. And so what I would say for myself is, is that because of my hand in a hand and a force greater than my own, I have been prepared in ways that I didn't even know I was being prepared for. And the truth is, for me and for every person, every single thing that has ever happened in your life is preparing you for the moment that is to come. I was on the train from Manchester to London and it came 
just came. Had something like that ever happened to you before? Yes, truthfully. <laughs> I mean, other ideas had just come to me because I think if you're a writer and um, that's what you spend a huge amount of time doing, you do, ideas do come to you. But nothing had ever come so um, with such a, I, I had this, I thought, God, I'd love to write that. And um, when I got off the train, I went straight home and I started writing. I'm not worried about my future, about what I'm going to do in 10 years after soccer. It's about right now, you know, how I can contribute to the team's success, how I can make sure that, you know, I'm physically, mentally ready for each game. So it's, it's really just taking it day by day and knowing that, you know, the future is so uncertain. You just need to be happy where you are right now and just have a positive outlook on it. I'm competitive really with myself. Right. Honestly. Like, I, every time I start an album, I go and watch all of my performances. And I try to figure out, okay, what is it that I could have done better, or what worked? And really, my references, I go back to myself and try to better myself. So I'm really tough on me, more so than, than anyone else. I'm not a competitive person person that walks in thinking about other people and how I can compete with them, or especially not my husband. I really encourage them, if they have a great idea, to run with it. Uh, find ways to, um, to finance, find ways to build, find ways to market. You don't have to hold yourself hostage to who you used to be or anything you ever used to do. Because who has lived and hasn't made mistakes? When I think about my 20s and what a foolish girl I was and how I would give over my power to men who really didn't mean me well, but now I hold no grudges against them either because I realized I'm the one who gave over the power because I didn't know any better. And now that I know better, I know I don't have to do that again. It's one of the most powerful lessons any of us can ever know. It is one of the amazing and wonderful things about literature, as about film and music, is it's utterly subjective. So it's somebody's that's opinion. the point of it. You know, that's the point. Of course, you, work, you move in that world. If you expect to just stand under a shower of perpetual praise, there's something wrong with exactly you. Exactly right. That, you know, you will, you will get criticism. I knew that going in. And the, the funny thing is, I'm not a particularly... Um, I was never a very confident person in there are areas in my life in which I'm very thin-skinned. But not in this area. In this area, I, I think it's right and proper. I should be criticized, and that's, that's and can literature. You learn? So in the morning, I get a good night's sleep, and then in the mornings I try and get out here on Alki and just kind of walk around. Uh, it's just a really beautiful place to kind of start your morning and have a positive mentality going into your day. Yoga definitely fits into my life in terms of preparation. It's great just to have that sense of feeling at ease with yourself. Stretching is a huge part of soccer and making sure that, you know, you're pretty flexible. And I just love the feeling of kind of being alone a little bit and being able to take my mind off of soccer. But at the same time, the reason I go to yoga is to help me succeed in soccer. I always was a creative child and I, my parents encouraged it. And I always was doing something creative, was, whether it was writing songs or poems or making clothes or dancing, putting on shows, whatever. It was something creative. I think that that's so wonderful for kids. I think it just, it gives you so much confidence and you just feel so, so good about yourself and you feel like you can accomplish anything and creativity can't be judged so you just it just is great for self-esteem for kids once you develop a large customer base and we reach about a hundred million people every month with all our various businesses our books our magazines our television uh, and once you develop that kind of close rapport they have already a feeling that I'm providing them with things they need and want so it's very important to engender trust with your customer. If you disappoint them, I mean, if you make something that falls apart, forget it. You've, you don't get that customer back again. 
and all I want to do is grow my customer base. I want to be where that customer needs and wants. I say to the, my girls all of the time that your real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the alignment of your personality, your gifts that you have to give with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do, is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full, keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she, she's so full of herself, mm, she's so full of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself. Because you only when you're full, I'm full, I'm overflowing, my cup runneth over. I have so much, I have so much to offer and so much to give. And I am not afraid of honoring myself, you know? It's miraculous when you think about it. Did you write in here? Mm-hmm. This is really the room where I finished Philosopher's Stone in here. This is really where I turned my life around, completely. I mean, my, my life changed so much in this flat. I feel I really became myself here, in that everything was stripped away. I've made such a mess of things, but that was, all, that was freeing. So I just thought, well, I want to write. So I write the book. And what, what, what is the worst that can happen? It gets turned down by every publisher in Britain, big deal. So, you know, it's really back to the wall time here. My bedroom's a lot, my, my bedroom, the bedroom is a lot tidier now, God. God, that's mad. <laughs> this was a tick when I lived here. Oh, look, Harry Potter books. Now that's really freaky. And for years now, I felt like if it all disappeared, and some days I do feel like, it, is it real? Then this is where I would come back to, you know, this would be my baseline, I'd be back in Leith. And obviously if I'd known that 10 years, well, was it, yeah, 10 years on, I'd come back here with a film crew <laughs> and there would be my published books in someone else's bookcase in this room. I mean, it's really incredible to me. It really, it, I mean, yes. Because it's such a well-worn part of my story now, it's a big yawn to hear how I wrote it, as though it was all some sort of publicity stunt I did for a year. But it was my life, and it was very hard. And I didn't know there was going to be this fairy tale resolution. And I, I, coming back here is just full of ghosts. I didn't expect when I sprained my ankle back in October, late October, that it would come to this. And that was the hardest part for me. It was kind of doubting myself, like, well, you know, why didn't I, um, why didn't I take it easier? Why didn't I kind of pull myself out of training or out of a game? But um, you can't look back. You kind of just need to look forward. It was. It was definitely hard, but I feel like now that I'm actually seeing improvement, we just got an MRI and it kind of helps me a little bit mentally to be able to do bike a little bit, to be able to swim. I wasn't able to do anything on crutches, so now knowing that there's improvement, I'm able to do some stuff, I feel a lot more, um, I guess, happy. Progression as an artist is the most important thing for me. That is what success is for me. I feel like if I stay in one spot, I'm not doing my job. I'm not growing as a human being and I'm wasting time. And I feel like I always want to do something 
different from what I did in the past. I always want to challenge myself. I always want to have that nervous ball in my stomach before I go on the stage. That's how I know I'm doing the right job. And it's something still exciting for me. And I always want to challenge the music industry. I feel like it's kind of my job to create the new up tempos. It's kind of my job to set the tone and um, to be the example. So it's sometimes risky, but it's the only reason that I've been able to last for as long as I have in this industry because it's really short-lived and I feel like if people can predict your next move it's just not interesting and, and I'll be bored so I'm bored if I'm bored everyone else is bored <laughs> Every business um, has, um, and, and I don't like to think of things as obstacles all the time, I like to think of them as, as challenges to be solved and, and problems to be dealt with. And I would say to my team, well, doesn't matter, because every season somebody else was coming out. One talk show, two, show, two talk shows, three talk shows. There have been over a hundred talk shows since we started, but every time I would feel like, all right, got to step up our game, got to step up our game. The way you step up your game is not to worry about the other guy in any situation because you can't control the other guy. You cannot control the other guy. You only have control over yourself. So it's like running a race. The energy that it takes to look back and see where the other guys are takes energy away from you. And if they're too close, it scares you. So that's what I would say to my team all the time. Don't waste your time in the race looking back to see where the other guy is or what the other guy is doing. It's not about the other guy. It's about what can you do. You just need to run that race as hard as you can. You need to give it everything you've got all the time for yourself. I remember once, and it was like, a, it was like, um, well, like I'm going to call it clash, a flash of clairvoyance now. Obviously, if it hadn't come true, it would just be yes. some random crazy thought yeah, I'd yes. had. But I do remember one day writing Philosopher's Stone. I was walking away from the cafe where I'd been working. Philosopher's Stone, which became which, Sorcerer's Stone. Which became Sorcerer's Stone, mm -hmm. exactly. So that's the first novel. Mm -hmm. And I had this moment where I suddenly thought, it was like a, another voice speaking to me. And the voice said, the difficult thing's going to be to get published. If it's published, it will be huge. Wow. And that is exactly what it was. So there was some hint that the voice had said to you. Well, the thing is, you've got to believe, haven't you? Yes. You know, I was, I was not the world's most secure person. Um, I wasn't someone with an enormous amount of, in fact, I'd say I was someone with not much self-belief at all. And yet in this one thing in my life, I believed. That was the one thing in my life. I felt I can tell a story. Before every game, the key to my preparation is consistency. I really think that every athlete is a little bit superstitious. And if an athlete tells you otherwise, I think they're lying. So yes, I do a couple of things. I definitely put on my right sock before my left sock. And I like to take a nap at the same time and eat the same things. And then right before the game, I like to do a lot of mental visualization. So I'll go in a locker and just um, put on headphones and just imagine myself in the game. I would say to continue to work hard and don't give up on your goals. And I know for me, like I said, I, I grew up watching my family struggle and I grew up with a family that was successful but not born successful. And I believe with hard work and with a goal and, and love and positivity, then eventually we're, we're gonna be fine. When I started the business, the Martha Stewart Living on the Media, uh, our two words were inspire and inform. So you create the beautiful picture, you create the lifestyle that you think everybody would aspire to, so and then you have to tell them how to get it. So that's the teaching lemon. part. And to be that inspirer, that inspiration, cream. you have to know a lot. You can't fake it. So I learn every single day. One of my mottos is learn something new every day. And I do. So it's, it's uh, all about informing yourself so that you can be a good teacher. My grandmother was a maid. That's all she ever knew. The only real expectation she held for me was that I would one day become a maid and in her words, have some good white folks, meaning people who would not uh, speak negatively about me, who would allow me to take food home, who would be good to me, would treat me with some level of uh, dignity and respect. That was my grandmother's dream for me. But I had another dream for myself. Another, more than a dream, I had a belief for myself. And I remember watching her 
hang out clothes on a line one day and say to me, you have to watch me, Oprah Gail, because one day you'll have to do this for yourself. And knowing inside myself that that was not going to be my life. Don't know how I knew it other than that thing that we all have, intuition or an instinct that said, no, this will not be my life. But because I sensed that and was connected to that, and I remember it was a very still moment. It was quiet and I was still and I was watching her. I could see her right now with the clothespins in her mouth and putting them on the line and seeing the breath uh, because it was cold, the moisture coming from her lips. And I knew that that would not be my life. I knew that I will not be hanging clothes on a line in a backyard in Mississippi. So I was either four or five years old. And that belief that that would not be my life is what I held on to for the longest of times. I just, no matter what, believed that there was something bigger, greater, more for me. There's always trepidation. I mean, I think that people might be surprised to know that I felt trepidation every time I produced a Potter book. Mm. You know, the weight of expectation there was, was, I won't say crushing, it was extraordinary and wonderful to have that weight of expectation. You were but competing at times, with yourself. Yeah, and with the expectations, uh, latterly, of millions of fans, all of whom were very invested in the story and wanted to see what they wanted to see, and I knew where I was going, and I, I had to put on mental blinkers a lot and just think, I know where I'm going, I must not be influenced by this. When people ask me how I balance non-soccer stuff, the things off the field, um, I, you know, I think it just, I've been more confident in the last couple of years with the decisions I make and the opportunities that are given and the decisions whether to go through with it or not. You know, if it's authentic to who I am and, you know, whether it's a company I'm representing or whether it's an event I'm going to or whether it's a photo shoot that I've been asked to, to do, I think it's, you know, it's just weighing all of the things and making sure that nothing's standing in the way of what I do best and what I'm here for, and that's to play soccer. I think a star is born a star, absolutely. I think, I know me, I was born to do what I do. It's just too natural. There's certain things that I know no one taught me. No one can teach you. It's just, you are, and, um, I feel like we all are stars. We all have that. We just have to figure out what that thing is that we're supposed to be doing in life. And I know that for me to know exactly what I was born to do at such a young age is why I've been able to do what I do as well as I do it because I've been doing it for a really long time and I'm doing the right thing. Have you ever cried in business ever your entire career? Cried? Yes. No, I refuse. How do you, well, I think it's interesting. I cry, but I don't cry in business. You don't cry in business. No, I don't think business is worth crying over. I think you have to, again, uh, concentrate on business. Uh, you can build your business. You can help others build businesses. And, and it's business. It's not about emotion. It's about really going for it. You can be passionate. That's, that's the only emotion I allow in my business. I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. At times I might have had better shoes, but at the core, the core of, of, of what really matters, that we are the same. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are seeking the same thing. You're here at this fabulous school and we'll go out into the world and each pursue based upon what you believe your talents are, what your skills are, maybe your gifts are, but you're seeking the same thing. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's what you're looking for. The highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. And because I understand that, I understand that if you're working in a bakery and that's where you want to be, and that may, be the, that may be what you've always wanted to do, is to bake pies for people, or bake cakes for people, or to offer your gift, then, then that's, that's for you. And there's no difference between you and me, except that's, how, that's your platform, that's your show every day. So my understanding of that has allowed me to, you reach know, to, to, to reach everyone. And, and there's no way that you wouldn't, because that's, that's what I truly feel. Given a time turner, 
I would tell my 21-year-old self that personal happiness lies in knowing that life is not a checklist of acquisition or achievement. Your qualifications, your CV, are not your life. Though you will meet many people of my age and older who confuse the two. Life is difficult and complicated and beyond anyone's total control. And the humility to know that will enable you to survive its vicissitudes. I think there's no secret to success. I mean, I, I think Abby definitely um, hit the nail on the head. It's, it's all about hard work. It's all about going out there and, and practicing more than your opponent, than your teammates. It's, it's about mentally preparing every single day. It's about not slacking off, um, putting in that time and work. And um, you could tell from Abby that she has put in that work. Um, and that's, I think, the reason that she is so, so successful. But at the end of the day, end of the day there is no, there is no um, secret to why we are so successful. Well, trust yourself. You know who you are. Um, work very hard. How, how long did it take you to be able to trust yourself? Well, I was so young when I first started. Um, it took a couple of years because I didn't know who I was. I, I was still a teenager. Mm -hmm. But we always wrote our own songs and we always, you know, had creative control. For one, because the, the label didn't really believe in us. So they were like, oh, let them do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked out in our advantage because we proved ourselves at a young age. But I think um, the biggest thing is to I would say rehearse, practice, mm. and you know it doesn't matter if you're in front of Target, a daycare, wherever they, they you say have it takes to perform 10, 000, as hard hours, 10, hours to, master. to master. Exactly, would, you would agree with that. Absolutely, and I, I put the same amount of effort into whatever I did, and so did the other girls. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what it was, and eventually it prepares you for greatness. So work, 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 work. I have always said, ever since I started working, that I am my customer. I want to appeal to me. What's missing in my life? What void can I fill that will fill the voids for everybody that's like me? And my mother would always say, nobody's like you, Martha, forget it. And I always said, mother, I am like everybody else. And you know, I have chickens, I have a garden, I scrub the floors, I vacuum my house. I'm just like everybody else. And so she finally got to understand what I was talking about because I always want to please me with what we do. Do I want to buy it? Do I need it? So it's the need and the want. A lot of people don't know their purpose. And if you don't know your purpose, your immediate goal is to figure that out because otherwise you're just wandering around here. So the moment you can figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing, the sooner you are able to get about the business of doing that. I often get asked by, by um, younger readers what I would advise if you want to be a writer. This is the way I did it, so that's the only advice I can give. You've got to read as much as you possibly can because that's the best way to recognize good writing and to learn what makes bad writing and those are very good things. You probably go through a phase where you imitate your favorite writers, that's perfectly okay, that's another learning process. You resign yourself to writing lots and lots of rubbish. You just got to write that out of your system and sooner or later you'll hit what, what you know you really should be doing and what is your genre. And perseverance, you've got to persevere because it is a, it's a, a career with a lot of knockbacks but the rewards are huge. I don't mean in the sense that if that's what you really want to do, to be able to do it lifelong is the best thing in the world. Very re rewarding. But it's not a career for people who are easily discouraged, that's for sure. And to their parents, um, don't tell them it's unrealistic. Never, never say that. Because even if they're not published writing, well, writing is the passion of my life, so it's an important thing to do. I think most forwards like to play under pressure or else you wouldn't play the forward position, but uh, I do like that pressure and sometimes you don't always succeed and that's okay and as a forward you have to um, find that balance. I mean you're going to shoot five times and maybe you'll score once, maybe you won't. You know, maybe you'll get three goals out of three shots. So um, it's a little unpredictable and you just kind of got to go with it and have confidence in yourself. 
sometimes we don't always feel beautiful. Sometimes we have our days where, you know, we feel under the weather or sad or overwhelmed. And I know for me, whenever I have those days, I try to put on my best outfit, my best makeup, and my sexy heels. And when you look good, it makes you feel good. And so I really, you know, am a strong believer that when you're feeling down, you don't just stay in the bed and just, you know, soak in that. You pull yourself together and it, it is the beginning of overcoming whatever you're going through. I'm working hard all day, B busy in the kitchen, cooking and baking for my video edition. I need to leave this place looking clean and fresh. I'm Martha Stewart, so it has to be the best. Bring on the baking soda, bring on the clean. This kitchen has to be ready for the next big scene. The fridge is filled with all my favorite food. Any funky odors can really ruin my mood. This box here helps food taste fresher longer, stops any odors from getting stronger. My life is fueled by my being, and the being fuels the doing. So I come from a centered, place. I come from a focused place. I come from compassion. Um, it's, just, it's just my nature. I come from a willingness to understand and to be understood. And I come from wanting to, to, to connect. I mean, the secret of that show for 25 years is that people could see themselves in me. All over the world, they could see themselves in me. And even as I became uh, more and more uh, financially successful, which was a big surprise to me, I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Um, you mean you got more than that 30,000? I got more than 30,000 by the time I was 30. So, so my, so, but what, what I realized is through the whole process, because I'm grounded in my own self, that although I could have more shoes, my feet stayed on the ground, although I was wearing better shoes. These are kind of cute today too. Uh, so I could keep my feet on the ground even though I could get more shoes. And I could understand, I could understand that it really was because I was grounded. I've, I've done the, was doing and continue to this day to do the consciousness work. I work at staying awake. Always, always, always wanted to be a writer. And obviously, you want to be a writer, you want to, you dream of supporting yourself through writing, definitely. It, it, but it is a bit of both, because I was very much aware that children's books, you do not, the, the possibility of supporting yourself solely by writing children's books is slim. That's, that's the reality of it, which I, I, and I was fully aware of that. So in, in that sense, this has all come as a huge, enormous shock. I'm delighted because I, I always wanted to write and always have written, but my realistic side had not allowed me to dream of half of what's happened to me, truthfully. You know, I wanted to be an Olympic gold medalist since the since I was seven years yeah. old, so uh, but that was role, a dream come true for your me. Your role models are who? I wonder. My role models, I mean, I definitely looked up to Christine Lilly, yeah. Mia Hamm, Abby even in high school and getting on the national team, but I feel like I always wanted to kind of make my parents proud, and they were like the two people that came to every single game and just um, were my biggest fans, so. There are many struggles um, in any career. This career, it's tough because you always have to try to figure out what to do next and it's a lot of pressure and I do so many different things. I'm always being pulled in so many different directions. So the, the, the worst thing is trying to make sure I keep myself together and sane and I know who I am and um, keep my life balanced. Still make time to spend with my family and my friends and still make time for my career. It's just trying to figure out that balance. Well, I work really hard, and I think that um, that be working hard and have and making money for your hard work that was another thing that I also discovered as an entrepreneur that oh, it's all well and good to work really hard, but you must be compensated for your hard work, and not be greedy about it, but be compensated fairly. And that when you look at the end of the month, that you actually have some money in the bank that you could invest or reinvest in your business, uh, that you have actually succeeded in being a good business person as well and you can pay your uh, your associates and your colleagues well um, you can really um, actually you see that a business is forming uh, that a business is being created that you are actually being productive dear beautiful 
brown-skinned girl. And I use the word beautiful because I know that's never a word you would call yourself. I look into your eyes and I see the light and hope of myself. In this photo, you're just about to turn 20, posing outside the television station where you were recently hired as a reporter. You look calm, you look happy, but I know how scared you are. If I could say anything to you, it would be, relax. It's gonna be okay, girl. If you choose to use your status and influence to raise your voice on behalf of those who have no voice, if you choose to identify not only with the powerful, but with the powerless, if you retain the ability to imagine yourself into the lives of those who do not have your advantages, then it will not only be your proud families who celebrate your existence, but thousands and millions of people whose reality you have helped change. We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. You know, it's not what I wanted them to see. I just wanted them to feel the passion and I wanted them to, to grow that passion because this is exactly what I dreamed of when I was a young kid, when I was watching you. This is what I dreamed of. <laughs> I'm going to cry. You're going to make me cry, stop. <laughs> just to dream big, because dreams do happen. It was very risky for me to step out on my own. I want to leave my footprints on the sands of time. No, there was Being a young woman, I want to set the example that is possible for us to own our own businesses and own our own record labels. And sometimes we don't reach for the stars. Sometimes we are satisfied with what people tell us we're supposed to be satisfied with. And I'm just not going for it. I was here. All right, I'm Beyonce and I'm the president. <laughs> so I just wanted to have a creative meeting and figure out, you know, what the next direction will be. I booked the studio myself and paid for the studio myself. And I just had fun. I just did whatever I wanted to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. The top 50 rules theme is a new one for me. And so if you guys have recommendations for what theme you want me to cover next, leave it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. I'd also love to know which of the women that we featured resonated with you the most. Leave it in the comments and I will join in the discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to believe and I'll see you soon.